Well, good afternoon and welcome to Litton RV Live, where today we're broadcasting here in our marketing studio, only one mile north of the Winnebago factory based right here in Forest City, Iowa. I wanna welcome all of you today joining us on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, on our website and for our Twitter followers on Periscope, where today we're gonna to have a live Q&A on the all new, all season Winnebago Echo a great hybrid between the nibbleness of a Class B touring coach and the livability and storage of a Class C. So before we kick off today, just some housekeeping items. If you are watching on our website on Litson.com, you can chat in your questions off to the right. Uh, if you're joining us on YouTube Live, you can chat in your questions just off to the right. Uh, you can actually tweet us if you are following us on Periscope for our Twitter followers. And for those of you joining on Facebook Live, you can very simply chat in directly to the comments box. Uh, before we get started, I wanna welcome our wonderful team that we have joining us today that truly are responsible for all the great content that you see on our website on Litson.com, our marketing team, uh, Hope Litson, uh, Maggie Breister, and Ronna Gertis. Also on camera, I wanna welcome <laughs> our Vice President and General Manager, Heidi Thompson, uh, who will be moderating our chat as she does with every one of our Litson RV live experiences. Again, keep in mind, this is the same type of technology that we can use to communicate with you, which we do here on a daily basis with our factory trained consultants here at Litson RV to do a live interactive presentation from the comfort of your own home or office on any of our in-stock RVs where we can literally cover the things that are of most value added for you, uh, again, on any of our in-stock RVs. Uh, so about three weeks ago, uh, with the Winnebago reveal, they unveiled the all-new, all-season Winnebago Echo. And what we thought we would do today is do a live Q&A on questions that you all have. And when we sent this out about a week or so ago, we did have several people that emailed us questions in advance. And so we'll certainly cover those, although I know we already have the phone lines full of questions already. Uh, so we're going to make certain that we cover those as well. Uh, and we're gonna try to compartmentalize these into certain categories, whether it be power and electrical uh, systems, uh, kind of some uh, chassis items, insulation, uh, and then also just some hypotheticals. If I do this, can I do that? So uh, let's kick off with our questions, Heidi, and uh, we'll start with the power section, power and electrical. Sounds good. I'm gonna try to keep this organized for you. Good. Um, so probably the biggest question that we have and that has been submitted by Bob in advance is can you just walk through you know, what can I get for power? What is the generator option? What are my battery options? And in what combination? Sure, sure. So let's cover electrical in terms of uh, what is gonna be supplying power to what. We'll cover what is standard and we'll cover what is optional. I, again, keep in mind, really the goal of this coach is it being the nimble footprint of a Class B touring coach, but yet having the livability and the storage of a Class C because the coach has uh, 65 cubic feet of exterior storage. So just a, a lot of storage, but still in a nimble footprint, footprint at uh, 23 feet, two inches. So going off grid with that nimble footprint means I have to have power to run my stuff. And so what we'll cover is standard in the Winnebago Echo uh, is going to be a 315 amp hour lithium battery from Lithionics. Uh, that is the company that manufactures the lithium battery, Lithionics. Uh, 315 amp hours and 4,000 watt hours worth of power. Uh, so again, a single lithium battery and then also standard will be a Cummins Onan 2800i, which is the ultra low quiet, fuel efficient uh, gen set from uh, Cummins Onan that'll run off the top three quarters of that main gasoline tank. So that's the base standard configuration. Uh, then your first option would be to delete the generator. So if you have no need for the generator, uh, you can actually go to a single Lithionics uh, 315 amp hour battery providing about 4,000 watt hours uh, and then saving that space and the weight if you know that you're not gonna have a need for the generator. Uh, then the next option that would be available, and again, this is all factory installed, would be to go to a second Lithionics lithium battery, which will provide then 630 amp hours worth of power, approximately 8,000 watt hours. Uh, so again, really three different configurations uh, in terms of the power with the lithium battery and then also the Cummins Own and Genset. And we really see a mix of choices amongst the guests who have already ordered. Yeah, you know, we already have a lot of guests that have these on order um, arriving uh, uh, late spring of next year. And we have seen a wide uh, diversity. Um, certainly a lot of people 
um, migrating more toward lithium power though. Okay, another question. When you're adding the second lithium battery and you're keeping the generator, does that affect the warranty of any part of the product? Okay, so if you do the option from Winnebago that has um, a single lithium battery with the generator, and that's what would be standard, and then if you have us add a second uh, lithionics battery, it won't void any of the warranties so long, and it's true of any aftermarket accessory, um, so long that you don't have that causing a warranty claim doesn't affect the warranty whatsoever. Did that answer the question? It does. Okay. And so then a follow-up question from G. Davey on our website is, <clears throat> can an extra lithium battery be added later? Uh, yes. And, and so really the goal there would then be to extend that watt hours that you have available to you um, off the grid. And we could add a second battery right behind where that current lithionics battery is. So how much solar is on it and how does a pop top affect that? Uh, good question. So uh, to recharge those uh, lithionics batteries, uh, they'll recharge three different ways. Um, they'll recharge any time that you're driving using the second uh, under the hood alternator that I'm sure we have some other questions on that we'll cover here in a moment. Um, but broadly speaking, when you're driving, uh, if you're running the generator and you have that feature uh, or if you're plugged in, and then the last way would be through solar. Uh, and standard from Winnebago will be 455 watts uh, of rooftop solar. Uh, it'll be 270 uh, watt panels and a single 115 watt panel uh, for a total of 455. Um, if you do the, do, do the optional pop top in the 22A floor plan, um, we haven't been told a specific number, but there certainly is some expectation that it may slightly decline a little bit uh, because it's gonna be mounted to the pop top itself. But I don't think we have a firm fact on how much that is, but it would be slightly lower. Correct. And. Uh, Probably a really high question we just get every day uh, with our sales consultant is how long can I run the air conditioner off of one battery? Yeah, so that's a real every model, Ron. Yeah, it, you know, <laughs> it, it's a it's such a great question because it's real world, and so really the only thing that we can rely on is 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 static runtime. So if you were literally running that that uh, uh, air conditioner uh, literally full time, but what we did is we did a real world test with a Winnebago Revel. Uh, that actually only had 3,200 um, watt hours worth of, of um, available energy. And so with one single battery in the Echo, it's going to be four and you can go up to 8,000 uh, watt hours. Uh, that Winnebago Revel, we started at nine o'clock in the morning on a sultry hot day. Uh, and it was approaching, you know, low to mid 90s here in a humid climate within Iowa. And we went up until about 415, 430 in there. Uh, before we've completely depleted the solar. So, you know, we went uh, six and a half hours. Um, you know, another good analogy would be uh, in the Winnebago Travado. Uh, you know, those have um, approximately 8,000 watt hours, which is gonna be somewhat comparable. Uh, they've stepped up here within the, the recent models, but, uh, you know, a good rule of thumb in the Travado was six to eight hours. And if you went to the uh, higher Volta pack, which had 12,800, that went about eight to 10 hours. So. It's a pretty good um, um, ballpark. Also just keep in mind that you're gonna have, you know, solar bringing um, power back into the batteries, although we all know that it's, it's kind of a drip in the bucket, so to speak. Uh, but with the second under the hood alternator, uh, with that Belmar 170 amp under the hood alternator, it's gonna quickly recharge those batteries. Uh, one of the great things about the second under the hood alternator that Winnebago is using through Belmar is that it actually will charge at idle speeds and the idle charging capability is about 100 amps. Uh, whereas you compare that to the Winnebago Revel or the uh, Winnebago Travado or Winnebago Bolt with the Volta system and you can't charge it idle at all. So you could certainly just either start the engine on the Ford Transit powertrain uh, or you could also run the genset if, if that's the configuration that you have. Kind of another long-winded answer for okay. a very simple question, how long? Well, that's, a, that's another question uh, that just came up is, so the big question is, will the onboard generator charge the lithium batteries quickly? Uh, it will certainly charge it, but it's going to charge it more at the um, uh, same charge rate as the inverter converter is doing when being plugged in. And you're going to get a substantially stronger charge um, out of either driving it or using the 100 amps coming out at idle from the Belmar under the hood alternator. Great.
So Greg is asking if you don't get the roof rack with the solar panels, uh, will the solar panels be flexible panels or the same hard panels like what is mounted to the rack? Yeah, so the, the media and the pictures that you've seen so far on the Winnebago Echo has the 455 watts of solar mounted to the optional cargo rack. Um, my understanding at the current time is that they will still be uh, crystalline panels, um, so the glass panels, uh, but not the flexi mat panels, and then they'll be mounted to that one-piece fiberglass roof. But a really good question. Yep. Dick on hmm. our website is asking about the power system. Does it have an EMS or place to install one? To be honest with you, I do not know the answer to that. That is a very good question on, on the EMS. Um, I'm guessing that it does, but um, was it Dick? If, yep. if you want to just shoot us your email address, I'll research that for you and we'll get back to you. But I honestly couldn't tell you right now. Perfect. I think I'm caught up right now. Okay. So let's cover questions then that people um, came in advance with. Sure. So for just moving away from power, um, if we're talking about uh, just kind of the black tank versus the cassette on, on the two floor plans, um, some parks in California won't allow the cassette tank based off the mess people make with them. So that sounds with like a the bigger 22A, problem. <laughs> is there going to be an option to have an attached black tank? Yeah, so right now, um, it, it's a good question. And um, the question is being derived from the fact that in the 22A, uh, the only standard feature is going to be the cassette toilet. So it's a, a five gallon Thetford cassette that you can actually um, take out of the coach and use at a National Park septic area. Um, a septic system in a, in a campground or resort or in literally a common household toilet. Um, that is the only configuration right now in the 22A. Um, going to the 24C, which again is a same, same uh, twin bed model uh, with the slide out, it will have a traditional black tank because it actually has a split bath as opposed to the um, current bath in one in the 22A that has the uh, pivoting lavatory wall. Great. Sue on YouTube has a good question. How does the Truma Vario differ from the Truma Combi? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And so in both of the Echo floor plans, uh, there will be the Truma AquaGo uh, Plus version, uh, which will be your on-demand hot water source. Uh, you'll then also have the debut of the Truma Vario Heat, which is a compact, extremely efficient furnace. So it's a source of, of, of um, uh, coach heat with inside. Um, the main difference is obviously the, the Truma Vario provides your heat, uh, the Truma AquaGo provides your hot water, uh, the Truma Combi provides both, but really the advantage to the Truma Vario heat is just the compact nature, so it's freeing up additional space, but it's extremely fuel efficient. Um, a pretty good analogy is, is with a, just a traditional 12,000 BTU uh, furnace that's used within an RV. Uh, I believe it runs around about a third of a gallon per hour um, at 12,000 BTUs, uh, whereas the Vario heat um, will run in three different settings. So anywhere from uh, 5,000 BTU up to 9,000 BTU, uh, up to 12,000 BTU. And the amount of LP that it consumes is just so nominal with respect to comparison to that 12,000 BTU furnace. So um, at, in the low setting, which is I believe around 4,700 BTU, uh, it's only pulling three and a half ounces of LP uh, per hour. So it's extremely fuel efficient. Uh, cranking it all the way up to its high setting, which is 11,500 BTU, uh, it pulls about 8.6, uh, 8.7 ounces in there uh, compared to a traditional furnace that you would find in a traditional Class C or some B vans uh, that pulls about a third of a gallon. Uh, back to the prior start of my analogy, which you know, a third of a gallon is, is roughly 40 ounces. So it's, it's, you know, five to six times the efficiency of a traditional LP furnace that's used in an RV. So compact, very fuel efficient. That was a lot of numbers. That was a lot of numbers. Um, Previous life. <laughs> Good question from Brian. Can you close the exterior door and still have the freshwater hose hooked up? Yeah, that is, that is a great question. And uh, with the water systems panel, which you know, when you look at the media, one of the things that you really can't grasp just the appreciation for is the height that it's at. Um, with that water manifold system, that Nautilus freshwater manifold system, which is on the uh, driver's side near the rear axle, um, at a very manageable height, um, it does actually have a marine port. And so that marine port, you could run a hose through and, and stay connected to city water input. Uh, you could also then fill your tank with the power fill off of the Nautilus system, but also just above that, 
uh, there is a traditional gravity fill uh, just in the upper left-hand corner um, right above the Nautilus freshwater manifold system. But point being, you can close that door um, and still stay connected to city water. Dan had emailed this in advance, but just wondering about stabilizing jacks, hydraulic leveling jacks, are there options or do we know what we can offer? Yeah, right now, uh, I think the, the concept is that with um, such a nimble footprint going off the grid, it may not necessarily be needed. Um, we'll certainly be exploring those. Um, there is not a standard stabilizer um, feature from Winnebago Industries. Um, we'll certainly be exploring whether or not we can install uh, HWH equalizer or Bigfoot levelers. Um, I would guess that we'll be able to in the future. Uh, I'm guessing that we're going to need to physically take one to HWH to have that accomplished. But really the concept is that you don't see them very often on compact B-vans. And with the 22A Echo having a 156 inch wheelbase, you know, really the question is whether or not you'll need them and whether or not the benefit um, is, is going to be exceeding the cost. Uh, even in the 24C with that being a 178 inch uh, wheelbase, we typically don't see a, a, a lot of requests for it, but we certainly will be exploring it. Yep, for sure. Alex had emailed in advance just to explain the two propane tanks, are they connected? Are they used as one tank or do you have to use a, you have to switch it? Yeah, so Winnebago uh, originally came out with the, um, with the concept of the removable um, LP tanks um, back with the unveil of the Winnebago Intent that people really, really love that feature because you don't have to go to an over the road fuel center or to a campground or to a resort that has a licensed technician to dispense LP. So uh, two removable cylinders, uh, each one is 20 pounds. Um, they are tied in together so that when one depletes, it automatically flips over to the other one. Um, and actually, if you break down the pounds to gallons, uh, it actually is almost double the amount of LP provided compared to, say, the Winnebago Travato. Uh, the Winnebago Travato, I believe, has about 4.7 gallons of LP, whereas each 20-pound cylinder uh, in the Echo is going to be equivalent. So it's going to have almost double the LP, but also with, a, with an appliance that is really just using a trivial amount of LP with the Vario heat uh, and obviously uh, cooktop cooking with the range top doesn't doesn't consume a lot and even gas grill with the LPG gas grill uh, quick connect doesn't pull a lot either so um, really expansive but really convenient I mean you can go to a fuel stop and just swap out the cylinder and you're off and running. Cindy had emailed in advance you know why doesn't the Echo have a convection microwave? Yeah. Yeah, good question. And, and really, it's always limited based on how much space is there because a convection oven has to be very, very deep. Um, it has to allow for the depth for the blower. Um, the blower is actually what provides the uh, recirculating air inside, and there's just not that depth in there for a convection uh, microwave uh, in either floor plan, actually. So this is a section I like to call, what if I do this? And so I'm going to just wrap it This is fire. like the quiz show part. This is the quiz show this part. This is the quiz show part where you stump me. So what if I delete the generator? What do I get in, okay. in terms of a compartment? Okay, so if you, uh, so again, standard is going to be a single lithionics battery with the Cummins on a 2800i. If you do the first option, which is to delete that generator, uh, you will receive a sealed compartment. It's not just going to be an empty cavity. It's going to be the same high quality you know, inch and a half insulated doors, uh, and it'll be a sealed lined compartment where that generator would have gone. What roughly would be the weight advantage that you'd gain? Uh, the Cummins on 2800i itself weighs 140 pounds. So that's what you would save. And then if you added the battery, each one of those batteries is uh, 68 pounds. Uh, so the net is, is gonna be the difference. So roughly 70. It's 139 pounds. The generator? Yeah. And I said, Rhonda, what did I say? 140. 140. So I was off a pound. Uh, and then you'd obviously get some level of credit for the generator. Uh, you'd get a financial credit, yep, oh. uh, a credit on the cost of the, of the generator. What if I delete the tailgate package, the kitchen, uh, what do I get, what's left? Yeah, so if, well, first of all, the, the tailgate option is an option. So standard will be um, a sealed compartment in an expansive compartment. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a big, large compartment that's in there where that tailgate package that's optional would go. And when you look at the exterior uh, um, basement and cargo storage on the outside, whereas the specs show that it's 65, that's actually with uh, the tailgate not being installed. So it's with that compartment. 
Uh, just, the, um, just the gear garage itself, I believe, is around 55 in terms of cubic feet. So you would receive a, a um, sealed, again, uh, with the same inch and a half inch insulated doors. And then also inside that compartment, there is LP being run so that you can connect the range top and the tailgate. But in this case, you could use it for a gas grill or an outdoor cook stove or, or whatever you'd like. So you'd still get that hookup. You still get the LPG gas grill connect uh, either way. Yep. Yep. Um, if you only get one battery, is there space next to that battery, or where would the second battery go? I yeah. Guess? So yeah. So we're kind of working on that right now. And if you um, if you order just the single battery with the generator or the single battery without the generator and don't do that additional battery, um, there is space right behind it. So that first 315 uh, amp hour battery kind of runs north to south, so to speak. So from front to aft or to the rear and it's hugged up against the outside of that compartment. Right behind there, um, there is space to add that second 315 amp hour battery. And I know there already are some discussions, uh, whether it be in social media or just some customized requests that we've received for guests that have already purchased the Echo of adding even more batteries, uh, potentially where that generator would have gone um, to expand that beyond 8,000 hours, which is what you'd have with two batteries. And that's a pretty normal request for, well, not normal. We do a lot of customizations, whether it's small mods or yeah. uh, wild electrical packages to accomplish certain things. And so that is the one thing about nice about the Echo is it is seemingly very moddable. Yep. Um, and seemingly very DIY from the, from the user's perspective. I mean, I, we certainly would expect that there's going to be a lot of customization done by the end user and then also, you know, here at the dealership level. And like Heidi mentioned, uh, we do a lot of uh, lithium conversions, a lot of solar uh, uh, customizations and things like that. So I don't think there's a request that Brian Buffington and his team here with our service team hasn't seen before. So I know we're already working on some different lithium configurations. And I know that um, in the social media community, some of those folks um, certainly are, are looking at that as well. What if I, or can I, delete the graphics? <laughs> uh, you can delete the graphics. And originally we were doing it for our guests with a nominal customization fee. Uh, Winnebago actually announced this morning that it'll be a no cost option, just like it is on the Winnebago Revel and some other coaches. So you can delete all of the graphics, um, whether it be the, the um, Sierra or the, um, the, the green version that was available and you can just have those completely removed and it's a no cost option. And what, can I delete the patio awning? Again, that was that's because it's kind of a setup. That, yeah, that was fresh off the press. And and uh, yes, you can. Again, we were doing it originally for some of our guests that had ordered uh, with a small deviation customization fee from Winnebago. Uh, but now um, it is that is a new option that was just unveiled this morning. Uh, and if you want to delete the patio awning, so that's the 13 foot Colorado Carefree traditional uh, armless awning that comes out the patio side, you can delete that as well. And I believe it's an $800 dealer cost credit. So then my last question for this section is just, what if I get the bat wing off awning off of the rear end, yep. is it removable? Like we get a lot of questions about, you know, what's the state <clears throat> of that awning if you maybe don't want it on all the time or what's... Yeah, so the, the Alu Cab uh, bat wing awning, which is an awesome 270 degree awning, um, used outside of the RV industry a lot longer than we've been around and, and just really is a great 270 degree awning. Um, it is actually mounted into the infrastructure in the sidewall, so it could be unbolted. It's certainly designed not to be. It's designed to be left there in the bag um, that it's housed in, even as you tra uh, transit down the road. Um, it certainly could be, but it's certainly not designed to be that way. The bracket would still be there if you remove the bag and the actual 270 degree alu cab bat wing on it. Did I answer that right? Yep. So now I have some questions just about general insulation okay. and what kind of RV this is, because it is, you know, really impressive in that arena. Do you want to just set us up for? Well, I mean, I, I'm, cer I'm certain there probably are some very specific questions, but, you know, not to go really go down a sales pitch, but I mean, really, this is the concept of the coach is that it's, it's the footprint of a class B, but with the livability um, of a class C, but it's also intended to literally go off grid. Uh, with the all-wheel drive Ford Transit chassis, the, the concept is that, you know, this could be at the base of a, of a foothill of, of a ski slope. Um, and with it being all season, um, one of the great things about the coach is it's the first coach, to my knowledge, uh, being a Winnebago dealer now for almost 46 years, um, it's the first coach where literally every single water line 
is above floor. Um, every water line, uh, every holding tank, there is no heated drainage that you have to turn on and then have it parasitically draw on your batteries. Uh, everything is above floor and using such an efficient um, Vario heat furnace. Um, and I'm kind of an analytical guy. Heidi gives me a hard time about that a lot as she just did earlier. And what I tend to look at is data and the data being our values. So how insulative is it? Um, the echo itself um, has an R value on the roof because it is so efficient. It's a laminate block foam roof, just like you would see that Winnebago has been building for over 60 years. A laminate block foam roof with a one piece fiberglass skin up top and the R value is nearly 15, which is three times that which um, most class B's are like the Travato. The Travato R value I believe is around five or six, whereas the Echo is 15. You know, you look at the floor, and the floor in the Echo has an R value of 6.6, .6, I believe. Fact check me on all these. It does. It does. And, and uh, I think the floor in some of the other items, is, or some of the other coaches, is probably about a third or maybe half of that. Um, so just very insulative um, in terms of the insulation that's being used. Um, again, using the composite Asdell sidewalls with the laminate kind of sandwich foam for insulation inside the walls. Um, with the insulated floor and then you know you look at the cargo doors um, that's where you know you really need to have a heated and enclosed cargo uh, gear garage to the rear which it is so you don't want that to escape through cargo doors and those cargo doors are about an inch and a half thick including the entry door uh, and the entry door you know it's really hard to get excited about an entry door but it is if you're going off grid and you want to be safe and you want to be warm or cool and the cargo door inside the coach is just awesome because uh, it's very well built it's very sturdy um, the hinges are so beefy um, but it's also an inch and a half thick in terms of insulation and then it has a full metal screen door that you don't have to worry about anyone penetrating or a pet penetrating uh, and you can deadbolt it and so if you're out literally in the middle of nowhere and you want to take a nap and you want to leave that door open for fresh air ventilation because that max air premium vent system is located right behind the cab in that area and just how much air it's going to be pulling through, you can do that and deadbolt the screen door, which I can't think of an RV that we've had before with a deadbolting screen door. That's, that has no flex. It, yeah. It's rock solid. I, I think it's really different for us. You know, when we looked at the Echo, it's hard not to get excited about the width of everything, the compartment doors. And I mean, I could have opened and closed the entry door probably 20 times. It's very satisfying because it really just seals up so completely. It's so sturdy and solid. And um, I probably wouldn't be someone who would take a nap in my RV with my screen door latched. But this is just amazing. So they did a really nice job. Yeah, and, and you know, you look at you look at a B van, so to speak, and typically when when you have those types of um, insulation, you know, in a door, it means that it's quieter. It's quieter inside, but it's also quieter when you're closing. And with traditional B vans that have a cargo door and uh, you're trying to get that closed, maybe it is nightfall when you arrive at your destination. You don't want to wake up your neighbors, you're not sliding a cargo door. Um, and slamming it closed and that's also true with the entry door I mean to get a real good fit on some of those you got to give it a little bit of push But it just it glides closed very simply and it's quiet and you're not going to wake up the neighbor so to speak We'll add to the YouTube video pool of satisfying videos with opening and closing the yeah. door all of our corny update. <laughs> yep. Okay, <clears throat> so another question related to that. Why is there no window in that door? Uh, so really safety and security unless you know of another reason. Well, and I think insulation, I just think it is rock solid, so. Um, well, and I said the, safety and security. Yeah. I meant safety and Insulative insulation. And, yes, okay. But Heidi's right. Is the rear garage heated? Yes, yes, the rear garage is heated and it's actually heated off the Vario heat. Uh, you can actually see that laser ducted routing of, of duct work that comes into the gear garage um, from that partition panel, which segregates the coach from the gear garage. Elaine emailed in advance a really great question. You know, what is the divider between the cab and the coach? Because in their experience, in their coach, it's chilly. So what's, what's there? It is, I mean, you know, normal, normal vehicles, uh, when it's cold out, you start to warm them up, right? Because they don't have uh, dual pane windows and, and they're not very well insulated. They're intended to run off of the, the coach heat or the, the chassis heat that's provided. So that's just like a light duty automotive passenger car or truck. But, 
Uh, and that's kind of going to be the case in the front cockpit of the Echo. But uh, Winnebago has designed um, a thermal panel partition. Um, you don't really want to call it a curtain because it's, it's not the same weight as a curtain. It's very thick. It's quilted. Uh, it's insulated. And it provides a partition from the front cab to the coach. And it keeps the coach nice and warm. Uh, but it also provides a real quick um, way of getting in and out of the cockpit. Uh, especially if you're using those um, uh, seats up front, both of which now swivel, uh, whereas previous uh, Ford Transits only had the passenger side swiveling. Uh, but it, it provides zippered access, so you can get in and out if you forgot something, if you forgot a cell phone charger and you need to go grab it from the front. Uh, you can zipper it open, grab it, and then zipper it closed, and it's going to provide that, that cool or warm experience inside the coach. It's a penalty box. Yeah. <laughs> it's a time, <laughs> time, out, out, time out room. Um, okay. So we do have some questions just kind of on sidewalls. Um, and, you know, <clears throat> basically is if you, if you damage the sidewall, this comes from Bill on our website, is the Asdell, you know, sidewall body material fixable? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's a composite fiberglass uh, skin, and that's the concept to it. So it's, it's um, composite. It's not Luan-backed wood, so there's no deforestation. It's a green product, so to speak. Um, but it also resists. Um, expansion and contraction from heating um, and then also from freezing. So um, yes, it can be fixed just like a normal fiberglass repair, uh, repair excuse me. Um, but if you do have to have some significant damage, obviously the panels are available as well from Winnebago. So absolutely repairable. So just switching gears a bit to the, to the chassis, okay. um, we get a lot of questions if this will be available in a diesel version. Yeah, good question. Um, it is. It will not be from Ford Transit because Ford Transit doesn't offer a diesel option. Um, you know, and I'm not necessarily certain that it's needed. I mean, people generally like the concept of being able to achieve gasoline. It's it's easy to find, but they don't want to sacrifice the fuel economy and they don't want to sacrifice the power. Um, whereas the Ford EcoBoost that's in the Transit. Uh, is a 3.5 liter, and you'll hear the word EcoBoost used a lot because that delineates the, the engine that's being used because there's two versions out there, and some competing models in the RV industry are not using the EcoBoost, and that's a big change in cost. Uh, but going with the EcoBoost, um, it actually provides 400 pounds-feet of torque, um, which is um, a lot. I mean, it's 23% more power than the Mercedes-Benz turbo diesel in the VIEW, the Navion, and some of our, our camper vans. Um, so it's actually more powerful than the diesel equivalent, um, but it also provides more horsepower pep off the go. I mean, it has 310 horses compared to 188 in the diesel. Um, so that's you know nearly two-thirds uh, faster off the line, so to speak. Uh, you can still pull 5,000 pounds. You can take advantage of the pricing of gasoline. It's easy to find. So I think it's going to be a real good alternative. Uh, but right now, Ford Transit doesn't offer. They had one planned, and they scrapped it, quite frankly. Um, they had a diesel plan for their Ford Transit, and it was scrapped because the EcoBoost is doing great. People love it. Just be careful out there when you see a Ford Transit. Don't assume that they're all the same because you absolutely have to have the EcoBoost to get that power because otherwise it, it brings you down into the upper 200s, I believe. I think the base 3.5 is like 275 pounds feet of torque. So it's quite a bit less powerful. And a great service network. And a great service network. Um, you know, we were talking in professional development today with our, our um, sales consultants that um, I believe in the, in the United States, the Ford Transit outsells the Transit, or excuse me, the Ford Transit outsells the Mercedes four to one. Uh, would, and it does have just a vast dealer network because you don't have to go into a commercial Ford dealer to have this service. It can be any Ford dealer, um, assuming that they have the facilities that, that if they can lift it if they need to. But again, it would just be if there was a warranty claim because the maintenance is, is really pretty straightforward. So great dealer network. Michael had a couple of questions on the cab. Do the chairs recline? The front cab seats do recline. They swivel. Uh, and then also you'll receive residential cab seat booster cushions so that they feel more at residential height uh, with the step up into the coach from the cab. And then what is the setup for TPMS? Uh, so the vehicle will have TPMS from Ford um, as part of the standard chassis. Very popular question for many people, but Pam did email us in advance. What is the ground clearance? Uh, ground clearance is going to be um, nearly identical to the Solus and Travato camper vans at six inches, uh, maybe six and some change. 
um, six to seven inches, call it. Um, on the echo itself, we were specific in terms of determining what that ground clearance was, and it's actually, the ground clearance actually is the shackle that holds the rear shocks. And so we know that that's the lowest point from Ford, and it's also the lowest point that Winnebago goes to um, on the transit. You know, by comparison, I think you, we do. We see people comparing this to the Revel a lot because the Revel was our first four-wheel drive um, RV that we had with Winnebago Industries. Uh, that ground clearance is a little bit higher at nine inches. Um, but really it's designed to be more of a hill climber with the Revel, whereas the Transit is really designed to be an all-wheel drive equivalent with still having very good fuel economy, but being able to go into some slippery, uh, rutted areas, some slick areas, that type of thing. But it'll do some mountain climbing, but certainly not like the Revel will. You're not going to see a, a, a Transit crossing a stream like some of our Revel videos. Well, you don't know that. I don't know that. <laughs> Um, Pam's <clears throat> follow-up question was she wanted to find out about the suspension. So, you know, does it have a sway bar front and back? Has anything like Sumo Springs been added? Yeah, so no customizations from Winnebago, but some great um, performance characteristics from Ford Transit that are stock OEM um, right out of the box. So it does have independent front suspension up front. Um, so it'll have an indep independent McPherson strut suspension with a sway bar up front for the front axle. Um, the rear will have um, traditional leaf springs um, with heavy-duty gas shocks. Um, I'm certain that there will be some aftermarket accessories that are out there, but again, our advice is always, you know, try it first. Make certain that you're, you want us to change something before you spend the money in doing it because we want to make certain that you get the value for what you're spending the money on. Um, you know, we can kind of run this like kind of like a pit crew style. So if you don't like a certain characteristics, maybe we can make a small wedge adjustment here and there and, and maybe some things that will help you as opposed to just unnecessarily spending money. Also keep in mind um, now with so many of these vehicles, including the Ford Transit, um, this is going to have um, side wind stabilization built into the chassis itself. So you're starting to see crosswind assist uh, built into uh, some of the ProMaster chassis. Uh, you had already seen it in the Sprinter line, and now you've got it in the Ford Transit with the um, uh, side, wind, side wind stabilization where it will, de it will detect how much um, crosswinds you have in terms of how it's affecting it and make adjustments within the, the chassis itself. So it uh, may not necessarily be needed. Mark on our Facebook page is asking a good question. So does Winnebago provide a diagram of the coach showing where the structural supports are? So if you wanted to add ram mounts, or other items to the wall, the coach you're assured of attaching them in the best possible place. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all of the appliances and cabinets are always mounted in the steel superstructure. Uh, we can get a, a computer-aided diagram that shows you where those, um, those components are, but then also all of the wiring and plumbing diagrams all on computer-aided design. Eventually, they'll be available right on Winnebago's website. Uh, we could get those in advance if you need them. I'm going to jump around a little bit here now. So Greg on our website asks, how will the rear suites, seats in the 24C be attached on a box or removable like a van rear seat? Uh, the two three-point safety belts in the middle, is that what the question refers to? I think it refers to the actual seats. How will they be attached? Okay, so in the, um, in the 22A or the 24C? In a 24C. I don't know in the 24C. Um, I would guess that they will be on a box because they're the same seats that are in the 22A. Um, underneath the 22A, I know there are components underneath that that we cannot remove. We'd have to relocate them. I'm certain we could, but I don't think the chairs themselves are any different, so I'm certain that they're probably on a pedestal of some part in the 24C. Tom and Kathy on our website asked that they're interested in a TV in the bedroom. Is it pre-wired? Uh, so in the bedroom, there will not be a TV option. Uh, but in the bedroom on the patio side um, wall that is right at the foot of the bed, you'll see um, a coaxial output as well as 110 volt. Um, so it could be done there. Um, for those that are just streaming from a tablet, um, you would there, that's a big wall that's there. And so there's a lot of different opportunities to add RAM mounts for tablets, uh, smartphones, that type of thing. Um, they could be done on that wall, but then also in between the twin beds, uh, between the cabinets, in the overhead, you'll find 110 volt and 12 volt and USB power points with access down to the twin beds. So there's a lot of different ways you could do it. We could add a, t a traditional TV. Um, it has the coax and the 110, uh, but we can also do some other customized things if you're doing um, tablet streaming or that type of thing uh, with RAM mounts on that wall or even near the headboard. 
this might be a loaded question. Great. Um, John, <laughs> John on our website, I shouldn't even warn you. Um, John on our website, the secondary seats in the mock-up look uncomfortable. Are those seats that will be used or are there plans to install more comfortable seating? And then we had some follow-ups that it's like the Sola seating and what's your take on that? Uh, that's correct. It is like the Sola seating. And so... Wider, I think. I'm sorry? I think they're wider, possibly. No? Um, not to my knowledge, but um, we have, we've had very great um, feedback on the Solus in terms of comfort. Um, really, the main thing is you get three-point safety belts, and so it's safer for car seats or for any occupant. Uh, MTB Daisy asks, this is on the HD chassis, correct? Yes. Yep, so it's an 11,000 gross vehicle uh, weight rating. Um, so it's an 11,000 pound chassis, similar to the, the Sprinter line, which is 11,030 pounds, so only 30 pounds lighter. Um, the original 22A specs that came out showed around 1,500 pounds of occupants and cargo carrying capacity. I think when we include some options on that, you know, you're going to lose a little bit, obviously, but um, you're certainly going to be north of 1,000, call it 1,100, 1,200, 1,300, depending upon what options you put on the Echo. Um, each one is going to be a little bit different, but um, it'll have outstanding occupants and cargo carrying capacity, which is important because out of that occupant and cargo carrying capacity, you need to pull your, your, your people that you put in the coach, um, any stuff that you bring or cargo, and we have a 55 or 50 cubic foot gear garage to the rear, but then also 50 gallons of fresh water. And so you could be bringing 400 pounds of fresh water uh, if you had that tank completely full. And so um, it'll have outstanding occupants and cargo carrying capacity. As a result of it being on the heavy duty chassis from Transit with the highest uh, gross vehicle weight rating available from Transit, but then also thanks to Winnebago and Russ Garfin's team for you know the, the amount of thought that they've put into engineering this coach to be using lightweight materials to free that up for their end user. I mean, you know, you look at some competing manufacturers and yeah, they can slap in hardwood cabinetry from any supplier down the road in Elkhart or down in Red Bay or wherever it is, and you can generate beautiful woodwork but you're also gonna lose your cargo carrying capacity. So certainly hats off to Russ's team. They've done such a great job um, with Brian Thorson being one of the engineers on it. Just such a great job of engineering lightweight materials to free up that cargo carrying capacity. And making <clears throat> some quality choices that maybe aren't the cheapest. Right, yeah. Um, can you review the pop top? So how much is it? What's it available on it? When's it available? Kind of I a will pop top preview. I'll talk about what I know okay. at this current point in time. So. Uh, the estimate right now on a dealer cost level is a pop top is going to be around nine grand. Uh, you may lose some solar. We don't know exactly how much. Um, it'll be available kind of in that same time frame that the 22A comes out in the kind of that Mayish time frame, maybe just slightly behind that. Um, our first Echoes that we have sold um, are scheduled to be built and completed towards the end, mid to end of April, with shipping and kind of in that same time frame. Um, so with the pop top, um, it will. Um, be similar to what you see in the Solus, although it's a different manufacturer. Um, if you do opt for the pop top, a couple things to know, it's only available in the 22A. It's not available in the 24C with the slide out. Um, if you do order the pop top in the 22A, uh, the tailgate package is not available and the cargo rack is not available. So those are items that are not compatible and it's really driven by weight, like we just talked about. And so um, that changes, but then also I believe and I haven't seen this to validate it, but the Max Air um, fan, I believe, migrates rearward as opposed to being between the transition from the cockpit to the coach. Agreed. Okay, good. Um, what are the options for exterior? Uh, so right now, uh, the options for exterior, obviously the sheet metal is gonna come for Ford Transit, uh, the front cab, and that cab area is gonna be um, a high metallic charcoal um, kind of a granite color. Um, it'll be a little bit more gray and deeper, darker than the um, magnetic, which was in the prototype that you saw in a lot of the media. Um, it'll have the sidewalls that will have either uh, the green accents with graphics or the Sierra. Um, and you can actually delete either one of those. So if you don't want anything, if you just want it to say Winnebago and Echo, you can certainly do that and there's no cost to delete those graphics. But if you do put the graphics on, you've got your choice of the kind of rustic Sierra or the um, uh, kind of looks like uh, um, bright green grass, so to speak. That's what the name means, I think. Anyway. Using that English major. Um, you give me a hard time about knowing numbers with a CPA. I know. 
Um, can that alucab awning be added aftermarket? It can, uh, to my knowledge. Structure will be there. Unless you're setting me up. I'm not. The, I think it'll be way more there. expensive, probably. Absolutely. And that's kind of true of any of these, if you really think about it. Um, you want to try to get it right from the factory from the get-go, because adding these down the road is certainly possible. <clears throat> but certainly, Litson RV does not have the buying power that Winnebago Industries does. So um, it will be more expensive down the road. So try to get it right out of the chute. And we can provide you some great pros and cons. And one of the, you know, one of the great things about our dealership is we're very palms up in terms of what dealer cost is on those options because we really just want to get the coach right as opposed to having our sales consultants be motivated by trying to upsell equipment to earn the markup because there is no markup when you do it at dealer cost. So. Doug had emailed in advance, you know, can you remove the rear? Well, we know we can remove the rear wall in the garage, yep. but really what for? So talking about removing, you can't remove the actual coach wall, but the, the panel from the gear garage into the twin bed setup, that panel can be removed, but really it's just removed for servicing. Service access. Right, service yeah. access. Um, you answered a bedroom TV question. What is under that 22A rear bench, Dan asks? So those are the, if we're thinking about the same question, so hopefully I get this right, Dan, um, with the two three-point safety belts and that pedestal that is mid-coach, um, underneath that is a heat duct um, it's also where your automatic transfer switch is because right below there is actually where the generator is. And I believe there's also a bathroom pump for the shower pump. Yes or no? Good. Well, I'm, that's Just more of a good job. Um, the 22A, so you do have a fantastic fan. Uh, you have a Max Air Fantastic Fan. It's the high CFM version, um, and that's going to be located between the cockpit and the coach living area. Um, and then it does relocate if you order the pop top in the 22A, but in the two floor plans, it's in the same spot unless you order the pop top in the 22A. Tom on our website, aka Freedom Quest in Tampa, <coughs> asks uh, he's hoping that the Echo can be upgraded to a 3000 watt plus inverter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it can be, um, not from Winnebago. Um, we would need to do that as a customization. Um, but going from a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter to a 3000 watt, you know, it's gonna allow you to run more stuff. Um, if you are down in Florida and you're running that air conditioner a lot, obviously it's less load. So, I mean, there's probably a little bit of logic there, but the, the 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter is designed to power everything in the coach. So if you're looking at it to do some other things, great. But again, you could certainly just use the 2000 watt inverter that you're going to get from Winnebago and swap it out down the road, so to speak. There's a lot of discussion surrounding uh, charging at idle. Okay. So, you know, just answering why do you need a generator if you can just idle the engine to charge the batteries and then they're, you know, needing high idle, ver high idle versus low idle. Just clarifying that. Yeah, that's a good question. And um, I would want to research the specifics, but the, re the specifics that I know on the Belmar under the hood alternator is that you can charge um, at low idle, which is different than the Mercedes um, based bolt. Um, you don't want to run any diesel at low idle to, to clog the particulate filter. But even like in the Travato with the auto start that's with the Volta system, it ramps it up to high idle mode because the alternator that's used in the Travato does not charge at idle RPMs, whereas the Belmar is intended to. It's actually designed for marine, um, and the RV industry is now starting to use it. It's, it's designed to use it low, lower RPM for um, ski boats. Uh, that's the background with Belmar. Um, but it will charge at low idle. Um, you know, one of the concepts would be if you don't want to be running that, that, that van, so to speak, and let's say you are a traditional RVer and it is hot and you want to run that generator a lot, you certainly can. It's ultra low quiet. Um, it is a very quiet, fuel efficient generator. We have a lot um, of those going into Travados now. We do. With us being a, an authorized Cummins own and installer, we're doing some 2800 eyes in Travados. It's just, it's so quiet and it's so fuel efficient, I think would be the reason. Um, with respect to the generator, but um, you'll get charge, you'll get higher charging, so to speak, out of the um, Ford Transit-based um, engine running, even at idle. Just regular old idle. Just re regular old idle. Okay. Um, and then just to kind of wrap up, we have a lot of questions surrounding, like, when will we get a 22A? When will we <coughs> get the 24C? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously we have a lot that are already pre-sold. Um, we have quite a few that are on order. Our first ones are scheduled to be built kind of in that April time frame. Um, be ready. I'm sorry? Be ready. Be ready. They're, well, they're good. Early May. <laughs> Early May is when they're scheduled to ship right now. Great. You're like, just keep it simple. No. I think you did it. I can't give you one of these when I'm in front of the camera. Well, welcome to the camera. Yeah. So again, thank you to all of you uh, that joined us today for Litson RV Live. I want to thank our marketing team with um, Hope Litson, Maggie Breister, and uh, Rhonda Gertis. Uh, thank you, Heidi, for being live, live and in person and in front of the camera as today we took a Q&A on the all-new, all-season uh, Winnebago Echo. Uh, thank you for joining us on YouTube Live. Uh, great questions, especially those coming off of YouTube. Great questions from Facebook Live on our website on Litson.com and for our Twitter followers on Periscope. Be certain that if there is something that you will want to see, whether it be a Winnebago Echo when we have one in stock or any of our factory, um, in st factory fresh in stock RVs, we can certainly do that with our consultants in the comfort of your own home or office, which we've been doing uh, uh, now for over a decade in terms of providing live virtual appointments for our guests. So again, thank you for all of you for uh, joining us today as we did a live Q&A on the Winnebago Echo.